Hello, Facebook fans, YouTube fans of DX Engineering. This is normally Tuesdays with DX Engineering, but today we have a special guest. It's Nathaniel W2NAF, one of the founders of HamSci. Hello, Nathaniel. Hi, Tim. How are you? Good, good. Nathaniel, you got a big deal going on here at K3LR today and tomorrow uh, concerning HamSci. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Sure, Tim. We're putting in a HamSci personal space weather station here. And so this is a software-defined radio uh, that is a receive radio that will listen to uh, FT8 spots, uh, whisper spots across all bands simultaneously. It'll monitor WWV, WWVH, CHU, and uh, monitor that as well. And we're doing this for both scientific purposes and also to uh, help support, uh, we're looking to uh, develop ways to have this also support amateur radio operations. No, that's that's great. And um, just uh, give people a, a quick rundown on what HamSci is. So HamSci is a ham radio science citizen investigation, and we are a community that brings together both professional space physicists like myself. So I'm a professor um, of physics and electrical engineering at the University of Scranton, so I'm a space physicist by training, but I'm also an amateur radio operator. So we try to get the two communities to work together to help each other. So how many people are involved with Hamsun? Well, we have a Google group, which is probably the easiest way to measure this. And that Google group now has over 1,400 members. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we were featured in QST this month. 13 pages in QST. I know. <laughs> I, and the cover. <laughs> the cover, the centerfold, the whole bit. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... This is incredible. How long has HamSci been around? Uh, well, I started it back when I was in graduate school in uh, 2015. So 2015, 2016. So we're approaching 10 years now. 10 years. And where do you have um, booths or stands? Which which shows do you take HamSci out to? Uh, well, our biggest one is, of course, the Dayton Hamvention. And so we have a booth there every year. And uh, this year, we're also going to have one at the Northeast Ham Exposition, and I'm actually the uh, guest speaker for Saturday night there. So we're going to have a booth up there as well this year. I'm um, Friday night. You're Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So that the Ham Exposition is, is a great venue. Let's talk about the Ham Sci workshop that you have. Yes. So every year we have a workshop that rotates locations. And again, it brings together community members from the amateur radio community and professional space physicists. And we have two jam-packed days full of both oral presentations and poster presentations and demonstrations talking about either uh, how do we analyze the data to better understand the ionosphere and the geospace environment, or how do we create new devices that will help us to make those measurements uh, or to help amateur radio operations as well. So not everybody in that 1400 group that you have for HamSci is an amateur radio operator, but how... How many or what percentage would you say are hams? Uh, my guess would probably be 80 to 90 percent. 80 to 90 percent are hams. So, um, and then in some cases, the scientists or a hobbyists that get involved that that aren't currently licensed, maybe they get a license because of ham side. Absolutely. Uh, perhaps the best example of that is Phil Erickson, W1PJE. He's now the director of the Haystack Observatory, the MIT Haystack Observatory. And um, he had long wanted to get an amateur radio license, but he didn't do it until he uh, met me and HamSci was started. HamSci. So it, the, the website HamSci, H-A-M-S-C-I dot O-R-G, is where you want to go to learn more about what's going on. Let, let's talk about some of the activities that HamSci has done. Uh, how about the Eclipse QSO party? Oh, that, that's been a big thing. We've now had solar eclipse QSO parties for three eclipses. So it started back in 2017, which was the first great American eclipse, where the eclipse traversed the entire uh, United States. And we had a QSO party where it was a, a contest that lasted about eight hours before, during, and after the eclipse. And we were able to take the RBN spots, the reverse beacon network spots, and we were able to show the effects that the eclipse had on propagation across the entire United States. Wow. And, you know, the most recent eclipse, you're still processing the data, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So there were eclipses. There was an annular eclipse in October of 2023. 
and a total solar eclipse again across the North America in April of 2024. And we are still processing that data. So we, and we're, we're doing it in many different forms. Some of it is again, the solar eclipse QSO party data, mm -hmm. similar to what we did in 2017. But now we're using whisper spots and PSK reporter spots. We're also monitoring, uh, we've also monitored the Doppler shifts uh, that we've seen in the WWV and CHU data. And we're using, comparing that with physics-based models of the ionosphere. So there's a lot going on there. So uh, if you think about some of the impacts into some of the college students of today, mm -hmm. um, undergrads, as well as graduate students, um, that would never be involved with amateur radio, mm -hmm. but because of HamSci and their curiosity, mm -hmm. they got licenses. Absolutely. I mean, this has been, this uh, joining of science and amateur radio has really allowed us to bring amateur radio into the academic community, into a place where uh, college and university students really care about it. We're able to create summer research internships for, for them. We're able to create reasons. It's like, okay, here's why you actually, here's what ham radio is and why you might actually care about it. Right. And so let's, let's talk for a minute about uh, not only the long-term impacts of getting young people in amateur radio associated with ham side, but the personal space weather station, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have some grants from the national science foundation mm -hmm. and others uh, to put a lot of these units out there. Yes. What is your vision for the personal space weather station project? Well, I'm hoping that we can get these receivers to include the radio receiver and ground magnetometer uh, distributed as widely as possible. And I'm hoping that we can bring that data back to a central location so that uh, students and other academics can really get a much better picture of what's going on in the atmosphere. And at the same time, have the people that host these systems be able to say, use them as a so as a web SDR in their own house or be able to know how space weather is affecting them personally at their particular QTH. Right. So there is a big impact to amateur radio as a, part, as a result of the research and the data. Mm -hmm. So this this really can benefit mm -hmm. amateur radio operators from the, the work that ham size. Absolutely. In fact, the Frankfurt Radio Club um, they've funded one of our students to create a web-based visualization of that data specifically to help out those contesters. Wow. So there's start, you know, we have a prototype of that software now. We're going to be looking at this at that this weekend. It's still very early in the development, but yeah, we are really trying to make this system usable to people in their own stations. Wow. Yeah. So this is the kind of thing where you need to stay glued to the hamsci.org website mm -hmm. for What's going on? Absolutely. And and so how often do you update or share results <laughs> and things like that? Um, you know, probably every few weeks to every, um, you know, couple months. Uh, our cycle is uh, very largely based around uh, conferences. So uh, in December, well, of course, we've got the Northeast TAM Exposition coming up. So I'm going to be talking there. So I'll try to give updates when we go to that. And then in December, there's a major conference called the American Geophysical Union or AGU meeting. That's going to be happening in New Orleans this year. We're going to have a number of our HamSci community members presenting what they're doing there. Wow. And then we have the HamSci workshop in March. And um, that's going to be, you know, we try to get new results out for that. So usually every one of these conferences, we try to say, okay, here's, here's what's new or here's the progress we've right. made. The latest and greatest. Yeah. And even things like this, you know, um, coming to being invited to come to K3LR to put a station together really helps light a fire under us to try to get things pulled together and get it to the next level. And then, you know, we come install it here. We'll be able to show it to you. We're going to get feedback. Um, that really helps us. And so the, the SDR that we're installing here today mm -hmm. will be accessible by anybody That's right. around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and while you're gathering data, it's also accessible for others to do research or just mm -hmm. hobbyists. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So each of these systems that we put out, it's going to have a uh, URL that you can go to and you can uh, listen to it in real time. At the same time, it's going to be reporting to whisper.rocks and whispernet.org. And 
uh, places like that. And then we also have a HAMSI personal space weather station database, which takes some of the more scientifically oriented data and archives it there. Wow. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I was talking to one of the students uh, earlier this morning here, and I said, you know, talking to Dr. Frizzell is like, uh, trying to drink out of a fire hose. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So, thankfully, this is being recorded today, so you can go back and uh, and watch this again. But also, um, go to hamside.org yes. for uh, lots of information on all the good work that Nathaniel and the rest of the Hamside team are doing and affecting, you know, 1,400 people that are following uh, Hamside as well. And then if uh, they're in the neighborhood for Ham Expo yeah. up in New England yeah. here uh, in a few And weeks. I should also put a plug too, you know, for uh, I'm a professor at the University of Scranton. We have a student amateur radio station that was funded by ARDC, W3USR. You know, come uh, if you're in town during the academic year, we're open to the public on Thursday evenings. Come visit W3USR and the University of Scranton and talk to uh, my students and me in person. So come on down. Yeah, that's great. And an opportunity will also be tomorrow. Some of you and some of the students will mm -hmm. be on the air here at K3LR. That's right. So we, we will be on uh, on 40 through 10 meters at least uh, here, sideband and a little bit of CW. So I uh, get a, a chance to uh, meet some of the students here at K3LR. Let's uh, real quick, uh, we'll go to the chat room just to say hello to the folks that are uh, chiming in. X-Ray Echo 2 Zulu Zulu is on from Mexico, and Rodney is on, Alpha Echo 5 Tango X-Ray, and Jason Kilo Queen 4 Uniform Echo India, and uh, let's see, we've got uh, Rodney, we got you, we got Pat, Whiskey 3 Radio Golf Alpha, Ham Size doing cool stuff, thank you, Nathaniel. Our friend Mike Mowry, Kilo Echo 3 Juliet Papa is on, from Greenville, Pennsylvania. Uh, from the Netherlands, it's Papa Echo 2 Kilo. Always great to have you on. Donnie says, thank you for another great video. Uh, and uh, we got Rob on. Kilo Delta 8 Yankee Whiskey Fox. He's on from Martinsburg, West Virginia. So uh, Nathaniel, thanks so much for visiting with us today. And we wish you and the rest of the Hamside team continued success. Thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure. And thanks to all of you for watching. Hope you had a good time learning more about HamSci. That's HamSci.org. And uh, we'll see you next time here at DX Engineering. Until then, 73. 73.